you mentioned uh, in closing a, a few uh, recent developments, uh, the reconciliation, uh, debathification law. The debathification law served to only alienate more Sunnis because it was perceived as actually being more draconian than what had previously been in place. There have been many recent step, legal steps that alienated Sunnis further. The release of two health ministry officials who were widely known to be members of Shia death squads was a huge insult to Sunnis. Now, reconciliation, to the extent it's occurring, is occurring between Iraqis and the Americans, not between Iraqis and one another. There is zero political reconciliation, zero reconciliation between the communities. They're more and more divided. They're separated by concrete blast walls. Um, and within these communities that are being created, these sort of city-states throughout the country, uh, everything is, that is essential for life is available there. So we're creating power stations there that are separate from the national power grid. We're creating neighborhood advisory committees, district advisory committees that are separate from the government, sort of independent institutions, further undermining the Iraqi state. Um, and it, it appears to me that the future of Iraq, in the best case scenario, is a Somali-like situation where powerful warlords are able to consolidate control at least over some territories, and I imagine that those warlords who are in control of areas that are rich in resources will receive foreign backing from the Americans, from the Saudis, etc. But uh, it's also quite possible that civil war will be reignited. There's a key flashpoint in East Baghdad, Adhamiya, uh, where the Abu Hanifa Mosque is, the most important Sunni mosque in Baghdad. Hundreds of thousands of Sunni pilgrims used to go there. Abu Hanifa is a theologian who is sacred to many Sunnis around the world. The Mahdi army has been trying to hit that mosque with mortars for a long time in retaliation for the Samara attack. It's the last Sunni stronghold in East Baghdad. If that mosque were to fall to Shias, you could see Sunnis throughout the whole region being galvanized. There are many flashpoints, and the violence that we saw last year could really reignite tomorrow. It could happen at any moment. Uh, I'm, not, I'm being a bit facetious, but let me ask you. We'll do seven-minute rounds. Uh, um, based on what you've, and you, you've had obviously extensive experience, you, you demonstrate, and with, I'm not, we'll not make a judgment whether it was good or, or well-founded reasons that you point out all the other so-called experts, uh, don't speak the language, haven't been in the ground, don't, uh, haven't walked the walk, as you, as they would say, that you've walked. But based on what you've said, um, there's really no hope. We should just get the hell out of there right now, right? I mean, there's nothing to do. Nothing. As a journalist, I'm uncomfortable in advising a, uh, sort of an, an imperialist power about how to be a more efficient imperialist power. And I don't think that we're there for the interest of the Iraqi people. I don't think that's ever been a motivation. However, uh, I have mixed emotions on, on that issue. Um, many of my Sunni friends, beginning about a year ago, many of them who were opposed to the Americans, who supported attacking American troops in Iraq, began to go really nervous at the idea of the Americans leaving Iraq because they knew that they would be massacred. Uh, it could be Rwanda when they, the day the Americans leave. Now, the creation of these Sunni militias, the, uh, the awakening groups, militates against that kind of a massacre of civilians occurring because now there are actually Sunni safe zones and thousands of Sunnis from, out, from Shia areas are inhabiting territories that are controlled by the Sunni militias. Um, but I do believe that if the Americans were to withdraw, then you would see an increase in violence, at least temporarily, until some sort of equilibrium was reached. Some but the good news is we wouldn't be imperialist anymore in Iraq, from your perspective. Only elsewhere in the region. Only elsewhere in the region. I mean, there's no, I'm sure glad we invited you. I tell you. There's really no, there's, there's no positive scenario in Iraq these days. Not every situation gotcha. has a solution. No, no, I'm not suggesting there is a solution. I, I, 